Hi everyone, the weather today is not as bad as it has been over the last couple of weeks so I thought I'd take this opportunity in between rain showers to go down to the pond and see if we can check on the tadpoles that are down there and see whether any of them are developing and compare them to the tadpoles back home at the tank. So I'm now heading over to the pond and let's see if we can find anything. Welcome to Frog Watch. As you can see, there are still plenty of tadpoles living in the pond and they seem to be doing well. You may notice there is a wide distribution of sizes of the tadpoles. Some are big, others are still quite small. There's a couple of reasons for this. You may remember from the first episode of this series that there were tadpoles at different stages of development. There were some freshly laid spawn, but also some newly hatched tadpoles. Most of the differences in tadpole sizes can be put down to the timing of the parent frog spawning. But the larger tadpoles can actually release a hormone in their feces that will slow down the growth of other tadpoles living alongside them. This gives the larger tadpoles an advantage. They are more likely to bully the smaller tadpoles away from food and they will develop into frogs quicker and get that advantage of leaving the pond first and having less competition for food on land. That effect may not play a huge role in a large body of water like this pond, but it's an effect I've seen every year in my home aquariums with tadpoles of the same age developing at vastly different rates. Ok, well let's take a bit of a look around the area before heading home to check on the tadpoles in the tank. Wildlife photography is really hard. There's something moving around in the bushes here. I can hear it. And I just caught a glimpse of a fairy body, whether it's some kind of mouse or vole or something, I don't know what it is. But it does not want to come out in the open. It's crawling around under the leaf litter. I think because I've started talking it's stopped moving now and I can't even hear it now. But man, you have to be real lucky to be able to catch anything. Wildlife videography and photography is incredibly hard and you have to be extremely lucky to be able to see anything. But we've saw a couple of things down by the pond, some tadpoles in the pond and a few bits and pieces around it. So let's head home now and have a look at the tadpoles back in the tank. So here's the big reveal. Some of the tadpoles now have back legs. It's only two or three so far but the others won't be too far behind. 
At this stage in our lives, tadpoles gradually switch from a herbivorous diet to a carnivorous diet, and so I need to think about the food I give them. It's very important to make sure there's enough food for them, as if they get too hungry, they will become cannibalistic and turn on each other, and we don't want to see that. There's several foods you can give tadpoles at this stage. In the past, I've tried bloodworm and brine shrimp, both available from pet stores, but the easiest and cheapest food I've found is simply some frozen white fish fillets from the supermarket. Just cut off a small chunk and boil it for a few minutes and pop it in the tank. So it's pretty straightforward really. I've boiled the fish for a couple of minutes and I've left it to cool for a couple of minutes as well. Now I'm just going to cut it up into some small chunks, uh, two or three chunks, and we're just going to throw it in the tank and the tadpoles uh, should find it pretty quickly and they should enjoy this stuff. Within seconds, the tadpoles were upon the fish in a mad frenzy. They sure do like fish. This is the beginning of an exciting time in the tadpoles development and I'm looking forward to watching them develop over the next few weeks. I hope you'll come back next time to follow along. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.